Hi, welcome or welcome back to Sarah Lily Makes. My name is Sarah and I am the maker behind the channel. Um, I've had a few new subscribers over the past few weeks and I thought it would be appropriate, an appropriate time to do a brief reintroduction for all of the new folks joining. Like I said, my name is Sarah. I am a maker. Uh, lately, it's mostly just knitting, but I also sew. I am based in Northern California, where I live with my husband and our four children. And we are a homeschooling family. Um, I am actively involved in the costume committee of uh, the local children's theater that my kids are very actively involved in, so that consumes a lot of my time as well. Um, I've been knitting for over 13 years, but I took a very long, I guess, break from 2016 to 2019 where I didn't knit at all and then I picked it back up in 2019 when I became pregnant with my youngest and I haven't put it down since and here we are <laughs> um, so yes knitting pretty much takes up a lot of my free time and it's my hobby it's my comfort and my source of just relaxation and when I need to breathe pretty much so yeah thank you for joining for checking out my content and for what I have to talk about also uh, we'll get into today's episode but before we do that I am wearing the Stornoway sweater which is a pattern from Coco Amor Knitwear, and I test knitted this for her last at the end of last year. I think this was my last finished object for myself that I completed in 2024, and I'll stand up and just share a little bit about it. This is a textured striped garment. It comes up to like my hips, actually, I'll just go back a tiny bit. Um, it reaches my hips, just below my hips, and I really like the length, I like the look of this garment, I like how this turned out. I'm really happy with the overall fit and just everything about this. Um, I've been wearing it a lot now that I can, I'm not sick anymore. <laughs> I had mentioned at the end, oh, when I did my 2023 video that I hadn't gotten much wear out of this because I was sick and yeah, I've been wearing it a lot. And I knitted this with Sinisgarn Pure Gint held together with Alpaca Fulgotrad, which is their Alpaca lace weight yarn. I think it essentially just translates to a thin thread or something like that. But both um, the orange and the red is Pure Gint held together with Alpaca. And the colors I used were Almond Tweed for the Pure Gint and that orange feeling, I'm pretty sure, for the red. And the same Pure Gint, I mean the same Alpaca, that orange feeling for the red and Marzipan for the Tweed. And yeah, I really like this garment. I need to actually post some finished wearing pics of it. I just haven't gotten around to that. But I'll get to that eventually and let's do it again. You can see that it has a broken rib texture in between the stripes and I just really like it. It's just, it was a fun knit. It was pretty quick too actually because it's knitted on eight millimeter? No, not eight millimeters. <laughs> five millimeter needles. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was five millimeter needles that this is knitted with. So yeah, very fun. It's a drop shoulder construction and I like how the um, the construction is. There's a two stitch two stitch detail right there that goes down where you pick up 
you do increases on both sides and then pick up for the shoulders if that makes sense okay um so yeah let's now that that's out of the way let's get into today's episode what i want to do this year for 2024 and i think i'll kind of mention this at the end again is I want to lay out my videos where I do my finished objects, the traditional method of how most of us knitting podcasters do, is sharing finished objects and then whips and acquisitions. And then I hadn't done this before, but I think I would like to start adding my tentative imminent plans at the very end before concluding the episode. But today's, I would like to just chat briefly about my 2024 knitting goals and aspirations. Um, I feel like I didn't do that at the end of my 2023 makes and I kind of just dropped the ball on that. But for today's episode, I'd like to just briefly chat about that at the end. So yeah, I will start with my finished objects and I would like to do a monthly finished object or monthly making roundup video because I feel like that would be manageable for me and hopefully that would be enjoyable for my audience as well. So the first finished object that I have was part of my winter plans and it is the twist loop sweater by Other Loops and I... <laughs> This was my first finished object for the year, and I just love this. So I knitted this. I will also include pictures, and I will include the description of everything that I talk about below in the description box. So if I'm if I missed something, I will do my best to include it below. <clears throat> but like I said, this is the Twist Loop Sweater by Other Loops. And I knitted this with Explore Knits and Fibers, Rocky's DK, and Suri Lace Alpaca, or Suri Alpaca Lace, however, whichever order the words come in. Um, there is a cable along, two cables actually along the sleeves, and then there are three twist cables, or twist loops, along the entire center of the body of the sweater. Um, this also includes a short rose at the back and then there is a gorgeous detail at the end of the sleeve where you do decreases on the front and the back of the sleeve and I just really love that. I feel like it's just a nice extra detail that just adds to the overall enhancement of this garment. Um, so I knitted this, like I said, with Explore Knits and Pubbers, and the colorway that I used is Spindrift. And the size that I made for this garment is extra small. So I normally knit a size medium, or if the size comes combined, I will knit a medium large like you'll see in my next project. But I normally knit a size medium for most patterns that I've knitted for myself. And I found on the Ravelry notes for most of the, um, most of the knitters that made this design, that made this garment, they found that it was very oversized in the yoke. So I took it upon myself to size down and initially I was just gonna size down one size but then I realized I was knitting with a super wash yarn which is the Explore Knits and Fibers Rocky's DK that's a, a super wash yarn and I haven't really used super wash yarn in a really long time and I knew that it grows a lot so I decided to size down an extra size because of that element so I went down two sizes. I knitted the size extra small. And I'll include pictures like I said. But a few things about this pattern. I really loved it. It was very meditative. It was very easy to understand. 
it's not the greatest sizes included. I think there's only six sizes and let me see. It goes up to 47.25 inches in the chest. So it's not the greatest size availability and that is something that I didn't realize before I started making that and that obviously is my straight size privilege and I will take that into account in future patterns that are knit and be more aware and be more mindful of that. So if this is not a pattern that you can make, I apologize that I am sharing it. I still really liked the design and I I will take it upon myself to reach out to the designer and see what her thoughts are on that as well. Um, Continuing on about the design, it, so yes, like I said, I sized down because I knew I was going to knit superwash yarn and judging from the notes of other makers who made this design and they described that it was larger in the yoke than intended, than not intended necessarily, but than they wanted. So it fits me well in the yoke. But it's very long. So another thing that my notes on this would be to eliminate a couple of rounds between the between the cables. So I would eliminate maybe two or three rounds to get a shorter distance between each of the cables and then it would be like nine rounds shorter and it would be a more suitable length if you prefer something shorter or you could just completely eliminate the last cable at the bottom here which a lot of people actually did but I kind of wanted to just stick with the pattern and follow it and I like it I like the length it is slightly longer than I would have really liked it to be but it doesn't really bother me that much and I when I took pictures I just tucked it into my skirt and it was fine so this is kind of so i'll include pictures as well of me wearing it but it falls very low and it's really not that big a deal to me that it's that long i used five full skeins of the explorer knits dk and four skeins of the Surya alpaca lace. I was playing very serious yarn chicken as I was knitting this and it was a little stressful and I just kept knitting faster and faster. I felt like what was knitting faster and faster to try to see <laughs> if I was actually going to run out or not. But I had just enough yarn and I made it to the end and it worked out. I just I need to cut some of my yarn tails that I've woven I've woven in all the ends. I tend to weave in my ends and just not cut them for some odd reason. Maybe because I just don't have a scissors handy <laughs> when I'm weaving in my ends, but no matter, it's really not that big a deal. So yeah, let's see what else I have to say about this. I didn't alternate skeins. I never do. I feel like I reiterate this every time I talk about knitting with hand dyed yarns, but it's not, to me, it is not the end of the world if there's like a slight variation where you can see that I changed a ball of yarn. It doesn't bother me. I like it. It's part of a handmade, gar handmade garment to me. And yeah, I overall really like this garment and I probably won't knit it again, even though I really like it because of this size inclusivity issue there, so yeah. I like her garments, I like her patterns, so we'll see, we'll see how that goes and how receptive the designer is to feedback about that. Um, it, I feel like I didn't really talk about what this, the design element is actually. So it's a two, a three by two, How much is it? One, two, 
it's a three by two rib. I couldn't, I forgot. It is a three by two rib detail over the entire body of this garment. So, um, yeah. And there's a fold over collar, fold over neck. I really love this yarn. I, I'm not the biggest fan of superwash yarn for a few reasons, and one of them being that it grows a ton post washing and blacking, but I really like this. I like the combination of the DK and Suri Alpaca, and I would use it again for sure. Yeah. And that is the Twist Loop Sweater by Other Loops, knitted with Explorants and Fibers, Rockies DK, and Suri Alpaca Lace in the colorway Spindrift. That was my first finished object for the year and my first finished object for this video. And I will jump into my second finished object. And this is, I am going to, this is going to be a whole conversation. <laughs> so Sinisgarn, if you're new here, I am slightly obsessed with Sinisgarn yarn and patterns. And if you stick around, you might see that that's 90% of my knitting. Be that as it may, I still want to just talk about it because, like I said, I'm obsessed. Sandy's Garn just recently came out with their first two collections for 2024. 2401, which is a children's collection, which is part of the course for Sandy's Garn, and then a new yarn, so a new collection to sell that yarn. Um, I got both. Well, I didn't get both, but I got some of the children's pattern from the first collection and I got the second one. We'll talk about the second one now because that's what I have for as a finished object. And it is the Facile Sweater Chunky Edition. And so the booklet is 2402, the collection is 2402, and the booklet is 2402-3. This is their new yarn. Let me grab some. So this is San Nisgarn's newest yarn, Ballerina Chunky Mohair. I have a light shining directly because it's, the sun is setting and I want to make sure it doesn't get too dark, so pardon the overexposure. <laughs> so the new yarn is Ballerina Chunky Mohair and it is essentially a double mohair. The weight of this is, oh, I'll just give you the specs of this. It's 50 grams for 135 meters and it's comprised of 77 mohair, 77% mohair, 18% wool and 5% polymide. Comparing to their tin silk mohair, which is 25 grams for 212 meters, it is 55% mohair, 25% silk, and 15% wool. So this is a comparison of both of their. This is the tin silk at the top, tin silk at the top, and the chunky mohair at the bottom. Um, it's essentially two strands of mohair in my opinion and it very much reminds me of it very much reminds me of the Cicelare fat mohair which is the yarn recommended for petite knits marble sweater um, not quite as thick as that I think but it's got a nice weight to it I really really like it's it's fluff it's just so much fluff so the Facile sweater that I just finished, my second finished object, is knitted with two strands off the mohair and it is knitted on nine millimeter needles. Nine. Yes, nine millimeter. Yes, so it's, it's a chunky, it's a chunky big, it's a, it's a big girl. <laughs> it's a chunky girl. <laughs> the moment I got the patterns, the moment I got the yarns, I immediately cast it on because 
I wanted nothing else in my wardrobe at that point. <laughs> so I cast on on <laughs> when did I get this? Oh, Tuesday, I think. I cast on Tuesday of this week. Today's Thursday. I cast on on Monday. I got it on Monday. And I finished it off last night, which was Wednesday. Because I could not put it down because I really wanted this garment and I just really enjoyed knitting on this project. So if you've watched my 2023 makes, I talked about making the Facile Sweater Brushed Alpaca Edition, which is, I have it right here. This is from last year. So this is the Facile Sweater I made last year from Sandis Garn. Booklet 2308, I'm pretty sure. If I, I'll correct myself if I'm incorrect. And I really didn't like the length of the sleeves on this. So I was very aware of what I was doing when I was knitting this sleeve. And it's at the perfect length. I washed it last night. I dried it all off. And it's dry. It just took really, it wasn't, it just dried very quickly because it's so light and so fluffy. So it's a basic drop shoulder. It's, it's marketed for beginner knitters. Um, you knit the back panel, you knit down to where you would pick up to the sleeve. Then you pick up the front, the side, this side, you knit making, using um, slipping and slipping the first stitch, knitting the last stitch, and then doing increases here and here to shape for the neck, and then you join, you connect, you join, you knit down a bit to the armholes, and then you join the whole thing, you knit down, you bind off, pick up for the sleeves, do the same thing, so basic construct, basic drop shoulder construction. And then there are no decreases except when you bind off in the round, you do decreases every other stitch, knit two together, giving away quite a bit of the pattern. But anyway, um, and then there's no shaping. There's no, nothing extra, nothing super complicated, nothing super fancy. It's just a basic, very easy, beginner-friendly pattern. I really wanted to make this because I really wanted this. I really like the Facile sweater pattern, despite the length of the sleeves in my first one. So I was very happy to remake this and Make it a length that I can definitely get a lot more wear out of. And it's such a springy color that I can just wear with so much. You can wear this with dresses. It's easy to throw on. It's easy to wear. And I'll try to get some pictures of myself in it before I upload the video. But if I don't, you'll probably see it on my Instagram at some point. <laughs> um, yeah. It was a very fun, very quick, very simple and straightforward pattern and I would highly recommend it if you're not opposed to short rows and not a whole lot of finishing or just a whole lot of fluff, no pun intended. Okay, so I'm gonna just chat about these before I get into my works in progress and acquisitions because this is kind of an acquisition. They kind of overlap my whips and my acquisitions. So, um, If you're not familiar with Sinisgarn patterns or if you are, they come or they used to come as a large booklet and they would have like a couple of patterns. This one has like three or four, and then some of their booklets came with like 10 patterns. And if you are a Sandisk Garn enthusiast like myself, you 
would get the booklet because you want to make multiple of the patterns in the booklet. This is a different, this is a size comparison, by the way, if anyone was interested. It's not, I thought it was going to be like a quarter of the size, but it's kind of like not that much of a, <clears throat> the size is a little different, yeah. So I had mixed feelings about how they're doing their collections now because, like I said, I like to make multiple patterns from their booklets. Now that they're being sold individually, it's a little bit... I just have mixed feelings. The individual patterns are about $4 a pattern, a single pattern, and then you have to purchase the yarn on top of that. The original booklet for the entire collection was like 8 USD, it was 4 USD, and to me that just, that was definitely worth the cost of it because I definitely make more than two patterns from that booklet. Now, if it's $4 a pattern and there are four patterns in a collection and I want to make all four, I have to purchase all of them. I mean, I don't have to, but I would like to make more than two patterns in a collection. So I have mixed feelings because it's, I'm just, I have to purchase more. <laughs> Obviously, I don't have to purchase more. It's a good business model, obviously, and it just makes it a little bit more difficult for someone who wants to make more from a collection, who wants to knit more than one pattern. Now, obviously, if you only want to knit one pattern from the collection, that's great, and I think it's definitely more cost-effective cost for one who wants to only knit a single pattern from a collection. So I see, I get it, I definitely get it, and I just, yeah, like I said, I have like, I have some mixed feelings about the way they're doing it now. So I mentioned earlier that I also got some of the patterns from the children's booklet, the children's collection, and what I did initially, so I reached out to one of the stores online that was selling the patterns but they didn't have it um, in English yet so this is the store Garntopia and I messaged them and I said hey are you guys getting the kids patterns in because I saw a couple of the patterns on the on Sun Sun social media that I really wanted to make and they said yes but we don't have English physical English copies yet so if you are interested in it you can check out and I will PDF you the pattern and then ship your order. So that's what I did. I got <laughs> I got the Bonnie Cable sweater, which is the children's version of a sweater I made last year, almost exactly a year ago. It looks identical to the one on that <laughs> on the image. So I went ahead and I got the pattern and I got some yarn for that. So this is a segue into my acquisitions now, I suppose, because I am done talking about my whips. I mean, my finished objects. So I got the Bonnie Cable sweater pattern. I actually got that pattern and I got the yarn to go with it, which is the Sinsgarn Sunday and Alpaca Volgatrad. And I started on this last night, and it's kind of, I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, this is an all over cable and ribbed sweater for kids. So the adult version, the one that I just sh shared, was knitted with double sundae and ten silk mohair on five millimeter needles. They also came out with a DK weight version last fall that is also on my list to make at some point but I thought I'd just go ahead and start with the toddler size version because my daughter is outgrowing most of her knits and I 
plan to remedy that and make her some as soon as possible. So anyway, this is the Bonnie Cable Sweater Child's Version and I am knitting this with double, not double Sunday, sorry, Sunday, an alpaca like I said. And I forget the color, but I'll include it here. <laughs> but it's one of their newer colors. I'm pretty sure it's either bubblegum pink. It's bubblegum pink. And this is the yarn. And it's a gorgeous Barbie pink, in my opinion. And I'm really glad Sandiscarn added this color to their collection because I've been kind of in a color, colorful kick, I guess. As you can see, I have been knitting some color this year. I feel like 2023 for me was the year of expanding my wardrobe and adding staple pieces, adding neutral garments, getting that kind of where I can just have pieces that I could easily wear and throw on. 2023 for me was a year of neutrals and I really wanted to expand my colors this year and I feel like for me 2024 is going to be the year of color explosion. <laughs> I have been enjoying color this year and I feel like I am dipping my toes into this and I'm really just enjoying color. I am like I felt like at the end of the year I added this the bright stripes and it was kind of a slight introduction into an array and a color explosion but it really I mean it, this is still to me a mostly neutral garment and I really wanted color and I feel like this year I am going to knit with color I'm gonna obviously throw in a couple of neutrals here and there but for me 2024 is going to be the year of color and I want to knit a garment in this color for myself I don't have any yarn yet but I do have some other like hot pink yarns that I feel like it's going to push me out of my comfort zone a bit, but that's okay. I am ready for the challenge <laughs> of being bright and being, you know, just exploring color, I suppose. If that makes any sense, I, I don't know. You'll see with my other couple of garments. My other whip is also from the Sinus Garn. 2402 collection and it's this booklet and this is 2402-1 and it's also knitted with the ballerina chunky mohair and it is a single thread of mohair so I cast on earlier and this is for this cardigan so I was very much inspired by this outfit. I have a, but a white button-up shirt. I'm talking about color and then I'm going back to neutrals. And I have a skirt that's very much similar to the skirt that the model is wearing. But I was very much inspired by the outfit and I was like, I could wear that. <laughs> Why not? So I got the yarn and I am planning on making the exact same cardigan with the exact same yarn. I'm easily influenced and I'm not going to apologize about that because there's nothing wrong with that, you know, like we're all influenced in some aspect or another, so. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I just, I cast it on this this morning and this one is knitted on uh, seven millimeter needles. And I think this is my only seven millimeter needle. So I'm going to have to, um, it's a drop shoulder. So you knit the back and then you break the yarn and you pick up for the left shoulder. You knit down, you break the yarn, you pick up for the right shoulder. And then you join in the round and then you knit down. I'm planning on doing the ribbing on this one, not just the bind off in round like I did with my green sweater and I think as well the front um, the opening does not have buttonholes and it does not have finishing as well 
I think you just do the same thing where you slip the first stitch purlwise and you knit the last stitch to give it a nice neat edge. And I think I'll do that if I have enough yarn, I might end up just adding an I-cord edge to it, but I'm not sure yet if that's what I want to do. Um, so this is fluffy. I don't know if you can see how fluffy it is on camera. This is just a single strand of the Ballerina Chunky. And like I said, it's knitted on seven millimeter needles. I said I only had one needle this size, so I'm just gonna have to put the rest of the work on like holding cords or something as I'm picking up for the shoulders. But yeah, that is my Facile cardigan. So all four booklets or all four patterns in this collection is for seal. The first one is this one, which is a single thread of the mohair in a cardigan. The second one is this one, which is a single thread, no, no, sorry, a double thread mohair cardigan. The third one is double thread sweater pullover and then this one which I also want to make is a single thread pullover so yeah I really like these patterns I have fluff everywhere <laughs> I'm covered I'm covered in it it's it's just like having a goat in my lap which essentially I kind of do <laughs> anyway I plan on making all of those, so I just, I, it's a simple, it's a, <laughs> it's a simple knit, and it's very beginner friendly, like I said, if you're not opposed to no shaping, I feel like it's a great, they're great patterns, this is, so this would be my third version of the Facile, out of the Facile line from Sin is Garn. And I really like this yarn. I don't think I really gave much of an impression about it. I really like the yarn. I really enjoyed knitting it with knitting with it held double. And it was a nice knitting experience. I mean, if you're not opposed to mohair, if you're obviously not allergic to mohair, then if you are able to, I feel like you could give it a try. Um, I feel like also this yarn could be worth in a couple of petite knit patterns. So the marble sweater, you could probably use this for the Louisiana sweater for sure. There is another one that she uses. Is it just that one? Anyway, so yeah, I feel like there could be other, I just haven't really looked yet since I just got this. I haven't looked at other patterns that you could use this yarn for, but I like it. I like it a lot. And I don't know that this is, I don't know, I like yellow. And that is my Facile cardigan. Moving along to my third whip. Oh, yeah, okay. So I also got, um, this is another acquisition. I fell in love with the Rauma Garns pattern booklet last year. And I fell in love with a lot of the patterns in that booklet. So I also got this from Garntopia, like I said. Oh no, I didn't say that. I got this from Garntopia because those that was the only place that I could find this pattern booklet available in English. I do know there's um, a US retailer, but I reached out to them and I never heard back anything from them. They had it on their website, but it was sold out. And I reached out, but they never responded. So I was really hoping, but anyway, I got it from Garntopia. I got the yarn and the pattern booklet. And this is the Magna Flettagenser, or the Magna Cable Sweater. And I was talking about color. <laughs> and I really love this. Like, I am obsessed obsessed with this garment. I'm obsessed with this knit. It is also covered in fuzz because I am covered in fuzz and it's been on my lap. So this is an all over cable and texture bottom up 
cardigan, nope, bottom up, sweater, pullover, that you, I started with the body and I am going to completely finish the body before I actually start the sleeves because I'm a little intimidated by the construction once you split for the front and the back. But we'll see. This is not my first time knitting a bottom-up garment, but the first one that I did do was a child's garment, and I ended up frogging that a long time ago. Because it just wasn't working out, so I just let that go. I just let it go. <laughs> and so this is, like I said, an all-over cable and texture knit. I am knitting this with Rama Garn's Fivo in the color number three, but this is literally so gorgeous. I don't have any blues, any color any garments with this color blue i have a few blue garments but nothing this deep and rich and moody and i just love it i like i said i was embracing the color for 2024 and i'm gonna go from both i'm gonna go from one end of the spectrum to the other and i'm just gonna enjoy it all that's that's my plan for 2024 to enjoy color and it is literally covered in fuzz. So I've made a couple of mistakes already, but I feel like my knowledge and my skill set as a knitter has expanded over the past couple of years. I've been working on developing them, I should say rather, and I've been able to fix it by um, by laddering down. So I made a mistake on either, where was it? It was one of these like V cables. So I had actually twisted, like this one was supposed to be this way and it was twisted that way instead. So they were both like right facing, they were both facing the same direction instead of facing opposite directions. So I laddered down and I had to take both, <laughs> I had to take all eight stitches out and I laddered down and then I picked it up and I fixed it, work, working my way back up with a cable needle. And it wasn't too complicated. I had fixed cables before in my Moby sweater that I shared and I feel like that was a much simpler fix than this one, but it worked out and I'm really proud that I was able to fix it because I was I had to put it down because I was looking at it and I was like, I felt stressed about it. So I put it down, I took a break, I knitted on the green sweater and then I picked it back up and I fixed it. And I'm really proud of that. I'm really, I'm happy to say that I can fix cables for the most part. But yeah, that was, that's been kind of one of my goals from last year and it's migrated onto my goals for this year is to enhance my skill set as a knitter and I feel like being able to fix mistakes in a project helps develop that skill and to me that's a positive thing so I definitely don't have problems leaving mistakes in my garment because I am by no means like striving for absolute perfection in my knitting I feel like I used to do that and it's not realistic in a lot of cases, so letting mistakes go is part of it, but also fixing mistakes, on the other hand, is also part of like developing your skill set as a knitter. And I'm really proud of that, that I was able to fix. I had it happened twice, <laughs> but it was a different cable that I had to go down and fix. But yeah, it was fine. And speaking of mistakes, like my double moss stitch is like I forget sometimes where I am in my double moss stitch, so it's not perfect. Like this is the beginning of round right here. Um, there are a couple of places where I don't know if you could see it, but it's off. And maybe you can't. I don't know. Yeah, there's a soft spot right here. 
that it's like three knit stitches and three purl stitches instead of two and two. And I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna let it go. It's on the side, it's on the side. I'm just letting that go. But like a cable facing the wrong direction that needed to be fixed. So yeah, anyway, it's a balance, right? It's all about balance. Yeah. <laughs> so that is my third whip and I have one more whip that I'd like to share. I just shared the magazine. Um, the Sandy Scar and Poppy magazine booklet 2313. I'm pretty sure this was their last booklet of the year. Yeah. Anyway, I started this earlier in January and this is for my younger son. And this is the Philippe Cozy Genser. And I am knitting the size 12 or 14. He just turned 12, so I think I'm knitting the size 14. I have been trying to knit a size or two up for my... Nope, it's the size 12 because it only goes up to size 12. But I am planning on making it larger, longer, and going from there. So... This is knitted with their new yarn, Poppy, which is very similar to their yarn, Kos. If you've knitted with Kos before, it's a very, very similar yarn. Poppy, Poppy, Poppy is a blown yarn, which is 50% super fine alpaca, 35% cotton, and 15% merino wool. The yardage is 110 meters per 50 grams. Compared to Kos, which is 150 meters per 50 grams. So this is slightly less meterage. The puppy is slightly less meterage per 50 grams. But to me, they're the, it's very similar gauge. And um, yeah. This yarn color is Above the Clouds, and this was one of my winter plans for winter this winter. So this is for my younger son, and I have done one sleeve, and then I picked up and I continued the body because I want to finish this ball of yarn before going to finish the second sleeve. I think I have two more balls of yarn, so I wanted to just make sure I don't run out of yarn <laughs> and make it as long as possible without running out of yarn. I just dropped a stitch, so I'm just picking it up, sorry. I normally put the sleeves on the stitch holders and I don't know where it went. Ugh. Anyway, there are four raglan, it's a raglan construction with a series of nine rib stitches it's might be hard to tell but yeah I really like it and I kind of I considered going down the side continuing the route the ribbed but it's not included in the pattern so I just I let it go and I might have made the ribbing on the sleeve a little too long I think I'm supposed to have like that much ribbing but really it's not that big of a deal and it's very soft. I am really, I have been really enjoying knitting with this yarn. And I don't, I don't find it itchy. I don't find it, it's very soft. It's a really squishy, squishy yarn to knit with. And it feels very squishy. I also want to knit for myself. It's one of my winter plans. The Hadley Genser, which is this on the front here. I have been consumed with many cast-ons that have not been on my winter plans so I hope I can get to that soon I am really enjoying like mixing up the complex and the simple and just alternating between both because I feel like I have to be in a mindset to knit complex projects where I am not tired or I'm not necessarily like occupied with something else but also it's enter it's like I find it entertaining <laughs> like working cables I find 
it's relaxing, but not quite. So that's why I have my stockinette projects going. So I can alternate between a, a complicated project and a simple project. And then I have my simple projects because I'm out of the house a lot. So I take the simple ones out of the house with me and leave these tax, mentally taxing projects at home. Not that it's mentally taxing, but you know what I mean. And I think that is it. I have two finished objects and four whips and my acquisitions that I've been sharing as I share my whips. <laughs> I did get two more of the Ballerina Chunky yarn colors and I will share a picture of it here because I liked with all four colors combined. It's just a beautiful springtime palette and it's fun. Um, my plans for 2024. I don't generally make New Year's resolutions. I am not a New Year's resolutions person. I find it exhausting to think about what I want to do over the course of 365 or 366 days. So I prefer shorter, short-term goals. So for me to say that I want to make a list of not really a list, but like I want to share about my 2024 knitting goals and aspirations. That's a little, a little bit out there for me, but I, I have a few things that's not very, that's not specific, like seasonal plans. I enjoy my seasonal plans videos and that's all fine and well. For me, for 2024, there are a few things that I want to do, like I said expand my knitting knowledge and expand my knitting skills. I might want to try steaking at some point. I don't know if I'll get to it. I don't want to really do an entire steak. So I would like to try steaking, but not necessarily an entire steak. Um, knitting for Olive has a children's pattern. I'm pretty sure it's the anemone sweater and I have the pattern for it. <clears throat> but it is the, the arms are steaked. The armholes, I guess. So it's knitted completely in the round, I'm pretty sure, and then the armholes are steaked. So I feel like starting with something like that <laughs> would be manageable for me. And that's one bit of it, I guess. And then my second goal or aspiration is, like I mentioned throughout the video, is to incorporate color into my wardrobe add as much color as I possibly can. <laughs> I just feel like I need to definitely have more color in my wardrobe. I need to expand my color selection and reach out of my comfort zone a little bit. And then one more thing that I would like to aspire to do, expand my pattern designer patterns, <laughs> if that makes sense. No, I am not, I am not abandoning Sinuscarn. That is not going anywhere. That is going to stay in my pattern collection for sure. I am, I, I'm very eagerly looking forward to their spring collection next week. And I'm just like stalking the website. <laughs> but I mean, um, I want to just branch out a little bit more from Petite Knit. I love Petite Knit patterns. I feel like she is an amazing designer and she has definitely found her niche and she has influenced so many knitters and she has helped so many knitters grow as knitters. But I feel like I, I can't keep knitting Petite Knit patterns. I knit, I don't have a whole lot of my favorite things, knitwear designs patterns I might have like four or five and but I mean I want to expand beyond petite knit my favorite things knitwear other loops I only have one of her pattern two of her patterns but I would like to try different designers I would like to try more of Sari Nordland's patterns I would definitely like to try some more patterns from Rauma um I want to knit one more garment from this magazine <laughs> But obviously Santa Scarn ain't going nowhere. That that is that's gonna stay. That's like my bread and butter of my knitting patterns. <laughs> 
And I would like to try smaller and up and coming designers. So if you have any designer patterns that you think I would like, if I mean, you, if you've watched my videos, you kind of know my sense of <laughs> my sense of like what patterns I like. If you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them. And yeah, I have nothing against those designers. I definitely plan to knit a couple of things from them. Petite knit, my favorite things, etc. And some of their patterns that have been on my fall and winter plans are gonna be migrated to my spring plans because I still wanna make those patterns. But I just wanna expand my pattern library, so to speak. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> those are my very broad, very generalized plans for 2024, color, more patterns and expanding my knitting knowledge. And I feel like I've kind of started doing that already. So it's just to continue with that. But yeah, that is it for my goals for 2024. My current plans is to finish off <laughs> all of these whips that's on my plate here. And then I have three or four whips from last year that I would really like to get done. But it just keeps growing. My knit list just keeps growing. It is what it is. It's the nature of the game. It's just, I get excited about new patterns. I get excited about new yarn. And I feel like we can all relate to that, to some degree at least. And yeah, I'm looking forward to making my spring plans video soon and I'll probably have half of it. <laughs> I'll probably have half of it done by then because my spring plans include these mohair, this chunky mohair. And <clears throat> I think that's it. Um, if you haven't already liked and subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you do. Thank you for watching if you've made it this far and thank you for checking out my content. I would love to know what you were working on if you were working on something while you were watching this episode and thanks for hanging out with me today. Please like and subscribe like I said if you haven't already I would really love that and I wish you a happy knitting and I will see you next time. Bye!